So for the temporal lobe challenge, I'm going to stimulate Rachel's right ear by clicking my fingers. And we'll test the right deltoid. And again, we'll click the fingers and stimulate Rachel's right ear and test her left deltoid. Then we'll reverse this round and stimulate Rachel's left ear and test her right deltoid. And then we'll stimulate Rachel's left ear again and challenge the left deltoid. So one of the challenges for hand dominance is to throw a ball and see which hand the patient catches it in. Another test for hand dominance is to determine which hand the patient holds a toothbrush to clean their teeth. A good test to determine foot dominance is to place a ball between the feet equally and ask the patient to kick the ball, noting which foot is used to initiate the movement. Another good test for foot dominance is to ask the patient to write their name as if they're writing it in the sand with their toes. This shows very clearly that the right foot is dominant in this case. The first test we're going to use for eye dominance is to hand the patient a magnifying glass and ask them to look through it. We can see here clearly that the right eye is the dominant eye. So the second eye test is the tube to the face. Here we're going to use a rolled up piece of paper like a telescope and Rachel's going to put it to her eye. And we note here that the right eye is the dominant one. Test for ear dominance. Tuning fork head turn test. <coughs> Tap the tuning fork, eyes closed, and see which ear is turned towards the tuning fork. So the second ear dominance test we're going to use is listening at the door. So the patient goes to the door and listens as if there's a conversation going on the other side of the door. And here we see that the right ear is clearly dominant. Okay, so now we're going to test the left hemisphere for dominance. Rachel's going to count from 20 backwards, subtracting threes. Go off here. 20, 70, 40. Push up. Excellent. 11, and then I'm going to test eight, the left. Push five, up. Two. Zero. So now we're going to test the right hemisphere dominance. When Rachel hums an original tune, she's activating her right hemisphere, which will mean that the left deltoid will be nice and strong. Push. And the right arm during this should become inhibited. Posture. First test we're going to do is head tilt. Ask the patients to sit straight on a chair, but don't ask to hold the head upright. The side of the tilt is usually the side of the weaker hemisphere. Posture, eye balance. From the front, gently position the head so that it is level. In other words, the bottom of the ears are horizontal. Instruct the person now to look at you. The wider eye is usually on the side of the weak hemisphere. So eye fixation. The person must fix their vision on an object for more than three seconds. Test a strong indicator muscle for weakening. If weakening, it indicates a right hemisphere weakness. Pupils. The person must fix their vision on an object distally, such as a wall. The larger pupil is usually on the side of hemisphere weakness. Facial muscles. Look carefully at the nasolabial folds running from the nose to the side of the mouth. 
the side of the shallower or absent crease is usually the side of the weak hemisphere. Tongue deviation. Get the person to stick their tongue out. The tongue will usually deviate to the side of the weaker hemisphere. Soft palate. Get the person to open the mouth, tilt the head back, and say, ah. ah. Observe if the uvula deviates to one side. Say, ah, again. Ah. The side that the uvula moves towards is usually away from the side of the weaker hemisphere. Standing body tilt. Note if one shoulder is lower than the other. The side of the shoulder tilt is usually the side of hemisphere weakness. Elbow bend. Patient stands upright and relaxed. Note the more bent elbow joint. This is usually the side of weakness. Hand placement. Patient stands upright and relaxed. Note the arm rotation by the position of the hand. The side of greater internal or medial rotation is usually the side of weakness. Thumb strength. Patient stands upright and relax. Ask them to make a fist with both hands and stick the thumbs up in the air as straight as possible. Push down on both thumbs into the patient's thumb flexion. The side of the weaker thumb is usually the side of the weaker hemisphere. This may be performed unilaterally. Here we're doing the left thumb, so bring the thumb up towards your elbow, hard. And on the other side, on the right side here, push up towards the elbow. So this way we can clearly see the right thumb is weaker than the left. Hallux strength. Patient sits with legs extended. Patient extends the toe as hard as possible. So bring it back towards your knee. The side of weakness indicates the same side as hemisphere weakness. This may be performed unilaterally. So here we're doing the left, testing the left foot, push back. And here we're testing the right foot. Posture exercises. Firstly, diaphragmatic breathing. Breathe in through the nostrils, one, two, three, four, five, and out through the mouth, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In through the nostrils, and out through the mouth for twice as long. Repeat six times. So joint distraction. First of all, patient prone, straighten the arms and pull and distract from the wrists, holding for five seconds and letting go. Pulling for five seconds and letting go. Pulling for five seconds and letting go. Joint distraction, patient lying prone, firmly grip around the ankles, traction, five seconds and hold, and let it go. Traction for five seconds, and let it go. Traction for five seconds, and let it go. Traction for five seconds, and let it go.